Up? Thumbs up. Thumbs up from both teams. All right. Good. Good, good, good. Are you ready? Ready? Are we ready? I'm really loud. I love it. Ah. I'm clipping. Yeah, I'm really, I can project. I don't need a microphone. Okay. What? Will you excuse us one minute? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're back. I'm supposed to be good. All right, so welcome to ShmooCon 15. So um, I don't really expect anybody to raise their hand, but has anybody made it to all 15? Yeah. All right, Carson. Todd, <laughs> they're, they're all my staff. That's, that's good. Oh, a couple guys back there. Yay. Um, this one in the middle is our 16-year-old child. He has made it to every single one. Well, so is the older one, too, I guess, but... <laughs> Jackson's only been to eight of them. Eight and a half, if you count the first one. I actually found out I was pregnant the night before... whatever ShmooCon eight years ago was. I can't math. Um, the night before ShmooCon. And had to deal with that all weekend without um, telling anybody. That was fun. All right, 15 years of ShmooCon. These are all 15 badges. This is largely thanks to David, who keeps everything, thank God, because I don't. I'm going to let you oh. talk about badges. Um, 15 so, years of badges. So the one in the middle, uh, in the upper right, where there's three in a row, uh, does, anyone ever, does anyone have one of those? Um, Do you still have your Band-Aids? They were <laughs> laser-cut metal, slightly thicker than, like, tinfoil, uh, which might be, like, what you would make, like, a razor blade out of. Um, <laughs> And they fit together like a puzzle, and there were like jagged corners where oh. there were nice sharp edges, and they would just tear up your shirt. So there are people walking around as their badges, and they're just ripping the front of their shirts. Everyone's got I'm little surprised. holes. I'm surprised. They kept sending me shirt. the proofs, and I was like, nope. And they'd send them again, and I'd be like, nope. And finally, we got to these, and I was like, okay, maybe that's TSA compliant. Like, okay, we'll go with those. Um, but we still, I mean, I don't know, we handed out uh, probably 50 Band-Aids the first day, so that was fun. And then the bicycle one, uh, so that was like... You're welcome. You're welcome, yeah, <laughs> he, he hated that. So um, the bicycle one, was, we, we, so ShmooCon owns a laser cutter, uh, and it's in our garage, so for a number of years we thought that was cool and not uh, tedious, and so we made our own badges. And uh, I decided, I'm like, I'm going to make a put-together bicycle, and I thought it was going to be cool and have some gears and whatever. And uh, we had an engineer. Really, it was my idea, but I'm going to let him take the credit oh, was for it? it because it was awful. It was. <laughs> we had an engineer, little pegs, to put the wheels on the bicycle. And I wanted to laser cut them because I'm like, we're going to make every damn thing here on the laser. And so we prototype a bunch of pegs, and like some of them break, and some of them you can't actually get them in. And we eventually engineer a little peg that we can cut out, and it works great. And I'm like, okay, every bike has uh, two wheels and a gear, so we need three pegs, and they might break, so let's do four. Um, and so I lay up like 2,000 of these on a sheet of acrylic and, and send it to him who's sitting out in the garage and he starts cutting them. Um, and the problem is when you're cutting big pieces out of a laser, you can just pick up the sheet material and the thing stays on the deck, right? When they're little tiny pieces, there's a lot of tension on it because it's about as thick as it is wide, so it doesn't come out. So he had to punch out with a little needle over 8,000 of these pegs and into because, a wastebasket. Because we're really good parents, this is while he was studying for midterms. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Slave labor. It's, it's the family business is what we like to say. Um, so. Right. So um, other badges of note. We're not going to talk about last year's badges because we're still mad at those. Um, <laughs> you might notice the other pretty smelling, if you were here for the science year, like those smelled really good around your necks, right? That was like wearing like pine scented air freshener all day long. Um, and who was here the year of the, the ski theme? Yeah. Okay. How do I do this? Just hit next. Who here skied before? How do I yeah, play right? it? right, because if you haven't... How do I play it? Just hit space again. Oh. Oh, there's no sound, Bob. Did you have your sound up? I don't know. Is I'm going to... I'm just going to go back. All right. I'm good. Okay, oh, wait. You. Where am I going? There. Here. We're technologists. Oh, sound was on. What do I do now? The sound's ac actually physically plugged into your computer. Well, okay. <laughs> 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 This is Bob, Bob Leaser AV. Big round of applause for Bob. Yay! Thanks. 
I think the last thing we asked Bob before we walked into this room is, we're going to have sound at the podium, right? <laughs> okay. well, we did have sound. We did have sound. I just didn't, apparently, I don't know what I'm doing. It's still not working. Oh. Regarding your badges, you're going to okay. get this wire form that's called... We'll start over. Hang on. This is really worth it, right, by the way. Welcome to Shmoo Khan. Very important information regarding your badges. You're going to get this wire form that's called your wicket. This is your ticket. Your ticket's a giant sticker. You're going to take your ticket. You're going to fold it in half. You're going to stick it around your wicket. So you're going to wicket, ticket, stick it. Got it? Yay! <laughs> so, so this was a really big deal because I think I said that probably a thousand times that morning because people were coming in, they'd see the sticker, and they'd go... <laughs> and I was like, I hope you're wearing that shirt tomorrow. So I've skied since I was like three. And it never dawned on me that other people hadn't skied. <laughs> so I just assumed like everyone knew what to do with a ski ticket. And anyone south of like Maryland was like, what the hell? It's a big ass sticker and a wire. I guess this is for lock picking, question mark. And that was, that was it. So le lesson learned. Um, anyway. OK. Uh, this, uh, David also saved all the lanyards, which I thought was kind of fun. So we're sharing that with David you. David might be too. a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said yes. Is that his wife? <laughs> Andrea's like, yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Oh, you want me to? This, we had this exact same conversation last year. Why is this new news? Okay. So, oh, right, this, this slide. Um, <laughs> so um, you'll notice people walking around this year in purple shirts. Uh, the shirts have a staff uh, thing on the front uh, with a piece of art designed by the eight-year-old multi-colored haired kid over there who's hiding behind a speaker. Uh, he doesn't want to come out. Uh, the back is actually a con map, so if you sneak awkwardly up behind staff, you can see where you're trying to go. Uh, um, we, put, we put all our staff in uh, the same color and the same type of shirt. Uh, there's no distinction between streaming and security um, and reg and whatever, because it's our expectation that if you have a question, if you have a concern, if you have a problem, whatever it is, feedback, you can walk up to anyone in a purple shirt and engage them, and they're going to help you out. Even if they're not the right person to provide the answer, they're not the right, uh, they don't know, you know exactly uh, how, to, how to help you, they're going to find a way to help you, right? They're going to get you to the right person, they're going to direct you to the right place, they're going to make sure you're, you're safe, you're okay, if you need assistance, we're going to work on that. Um, so uh, we've done a lot of work with our staff over the years. Uh, we now have some internal training where we try to help uh, get people to have uh, better techniques of dealing with folks who need help so that we're here and responsive to your problems. So um, a long-winded way of saying, like, we're here to help you. If you have any questions, if you're lost, if you have concerns, whatever, find a purple shirt, have a chat, we'll make it better. Um, and if worse comes to worse, you can always just come talk to Heidi and I, and we'll, we'll help you out too. So was that what you're looking for? Oh, yeah, that was great. Do you want to talk about that email address? Oh, yes. Um, there's also, um, if... It's like we have the scripted. Yes, it's like it's the Bruce and Heidi comedy hour, except it'll last forever! Um, <laughs> if... if <laughs> He's not allowed to say that this I, year. Um, can't, I'm not supposed to swear as much. <laughs> if you want to meet me out in the hallway, I'll be swearing later. <laughs> um, so if you have concerns that something happens and you can't find a staff member, um, you can email security at shmoocon.org. We're going to monitor that 24-7 while we're here. Uh, and, and we're not kidding. They'll be overnight. Like, someone will we'll get a page and we'll pop smoke and we'll come deal with it. Um, so if you have an emergency that's not quite a 9-11 emergency, but it's still an important emergency, um, you can talk to us, hit us there, and we'll do what we can to help. So again, uh, trying to be responsive uh, to you. If you have other questions or concerns or ideas on how to make this whole process better, please let us know. Cool. Cool. Yay. M moving right along. This is the part where I look expectantly. Oh, I'm going to keep doing this. All right. So um, we have sponsors. Um, you all got to interact with them a lot because we did something a little differently this year. <laughs> totally <laughs> on accident. purpose. Um, so in, in, who's been here before? A whole bunch of you. Right. You may remember the registration process where you register and then we tell you, go back upstairs because we're not ready for you. Um, yeah, today, right. we just let you register. We're like, hi and then you just got to roam around, uh, which was somewhat surprising to some sponsors and other places, uh, but I think it worked out well. It's so, okay, I've apologized to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the sponsors, you'll, you'll know, we're not a vendor show. If this is your first time at this rodeo, this is clearly not a vendor show. Um, what we ask our sponsors to do is do something different, uh, not show up here in suits and hand out flyers about They did their that services. one year. They showed up in suits. Yeah, we had a law firm that was, I think, trying to recruit. Uh, um, yeah, and they, they showed up in suits the second day they came back in jeans and T-shirts. 
But I think so, polos. They, well, maybe, but they learned polos. a little bit. Polos. That was dressing down, man. That's what they mow the lawn in. Um, <laughs> my dad mowed the lawn in a collared shirt, by the way, just so you know where I, where I came from. Um, the, <laughs> sorry, Bob. Um, anyway, we asked them to try to engage and do something different. There's a lot of contests that are there. Um, the sponsors get a lot of, of value out of being here because they're right in the flow of traffic. And in return, we ask them to do something useful to you all. So go play games, do the contest, whatever it is. Um, you know, enjoy the sponsors. They're part of the process of being here. Um, and, and they're a big part of why we can run the con. All right, so um, who this else? One, this one's you, right? Oh, I, well, it can be. Okay, it should be. Okay, okay. good, because you just interrupted me. Aww. Okay. Um, speakers. So this year we have, um, including the closing plenary, 60 speakers. Uh, 45, actually the, the new number with the closing plenary, I believe, is 46, David. Yeah, okay, 46 speakers have never been on our stage before. So um, that's super exciting for me every year. Um, if you're not familiar with who we are, one of the things that we've always um, felt was really important was to bring new speakers to um, the community and to our stages. So we look for new, new, not only new content, but new to us or new to the scene speakers. So on that note, I think 10 of our speakers this year have never spoken at a major conference. So I'm excited about that number as well. So, we so, won't tell you which one so, because we don't want to make them nervous. Michelle is in the front row and is very empathetic, and she just got scared for those 10 people. <laughs> she was like, oh, here? Like, like, I have channeled I all your fear. <laughs> it's okay. Um, anyway. Schmoozers and students. Uh, so we run a program called Schmooze a Student. How many people are here because you got schmoozed? There should be 82 of you raising your hand. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain the way that works? Sure. So the Schmooze a Student program uh, mechanically is a way that uh, uh, schmoozers can pay $400 and it gets them a ticket. It gets a ticket for uh, a student and it gets a student um, $100 toward a stipend and then we pony up an extra 100 bucks. Um, to give the students. So every student uh, who's part of the program gets a, a ticket for free and gets $200 for showing up. Um, and the schmoozers get to bypass the line because they don't have to try to buy tickets on November 1st or December 1st or whenever the third round is. And um, sometimes I forget what day the third round is, which leads to some strife in the Potter household. Um, <laughs> what I you, mean, what strife? We're what all you, good. What do you We're mean you're going to be in Belize? I don't know. <laughs> Um, Where are you going? So um, uh, it, it more kind of broadly in the program's designed to um, help make sure that the conference is accessible to people who are going through educational process, want to come and learn about cybersecurity. Um, and there are, uh, we don't um, uh, discriminate based on like how good you are at cyber. Like if you just want to come and you're like, this is fascinating, but I don't know anything about it. Like that's a totally legit reason, right? Um, you know, I, we, we judge the student applications on like basically three things. Like the, they have to have a complete application. Like number one, don't send me an application that doesn't have all the answers because that's, I mean, that's just no. Um, quality of the answers counts. And um, to be honest, if I'm like having to decide, because this is the first year we turn students away. Every other year we've accepted all complete applications. Um, we had uh, turned away a about, what was it, Bruce, like 30 students this something year? Like that, something yeah. like that. Um, just because you'll notice that the, there's a pretty big discrepancy between the schmoozer number and the student number. So um, we limit the schmoozers just because we don't want the t that to be another backdoor way to get tickets. But um, we like students, so we take on the burden of um, allowing the other, like, 60% of those students in on ShmooCon. So, um, so they're here. Yeah, they're here on Spookon's dime. Um, so for those of you that paid the general well, tickets, dime too, well, they're dime too. But I mean, so we pony up. But we think it's important um, to to keep this accessible. We we've had. I think story after story after story over the years of people who came here and either it set the spark and it got them going on their path. Um, there are some people who came here and they said, you know what, this isn't really what I want to do. Like, that's cool too. Um, but being able to get new people into the, uh, the industry, the scene, to learn, to partake in that and help them decide if this is what, something they want to do, I think is um, something we feel passionate about to the order of like, hey, let's let an extra 50 students in above and beyond. Uh, the schmoozers. So one of the fun things about the student applications is we ask them to send us a picture of them somewhere on campus with their student ID. It's a silly little way of 
either making them get very creative about faking their studentness or, you know, having some fun. So I was really, um, I've got two pages of these because they were really good this year. Um, you can probably guess maybe which one of these really made me laugh when I opened the email. Um, I don't know if Bruce has seen this yet, but... It's wonderful. Um, and, then, and then I'll tell you, I, I opened the email with one of these kids holding the, the table, and I was like, I, I don't even get that. And it was like four or five emails later, I opened the other one, and I was like, oh. And, and my favorite thing is that these two students, we, we brought them up, we pointed them out last year too, but these two students come all the way from where Bruce and I failed to graduate from college. Woo-hoo! So um, they are here from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Wait, what year are they? Are they in the room? Are you in the room? Hello? There are, they are. Are you going to graduate? Hopefully. Oh, hopefully. Are you, what year are you? Oh, your master's. Oh, you already graduated, show off. What? <laughs> Jeez. All right, well then, you're dead to me now. Uh. All right, a few more pictures. You probably recognize at least one of those faces, right? So, I like the, the sandwich. Well, anyway, um, okay. Um, in addition to those students, we also have representatives from um, three service academies this year. That, that, they are, that is not <laughs> what, them. What You're like, what like? service academies? Yay. So for those so that, disappointed. For those who don't know, uh, it, a service academy is like West Point, U.S. Naval Academy, U.S. Air Force Academy, just so you know. It's, I don't know if that's an inside baseball term or not. But I, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, uh, this w- is a picture from like three years ago. These students are not here. Um, West Point uh, has brought down a, a busload of cadets for t- like 12 years now. Um, they've been bringing down, and it's been... Uh, no, they've been s- since the beginning. Was it since Shmukon 1? I'm pretty sure. It's, pr- it's been a long-ass time, and, and it was a big, um, a big deal uh, for West Point. Greg Conti was there at the time, Colonel Conti, um, and facilitated. He's big in the community here. He gave a lot of, he's given talks here at DEF CON, places like that, and he somehow convinced... Uh, uh, West Point leadership that it was totally cool to send a bunch of cadets to D.C. in their civilian clothes and let them run around with hackers. Um, and, and there have been people who came out of West Point and are making a difference both in the military and the private sector uh, that really, again, lit a spark for them. So after like 12 years, the Naval Academy said, huh, maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> Also, in our backyard, question mark. So they've been sending students now, um, midshipmen, sorry, for uh, three years, I think. And then this year, we got contacted by Coast Guard, which I was super excited about being from Alaska, because, like, Coast Guard Alaska is, like, the thing. Go Coast Guard, beat Navy. (laughs) In foosball. (laughs) Holy shit, they're never going to dart, I swore. (laughs) But unfortunately, um, the Coast Guard got hit by the shutdown, so they had to send us much smaller contingent, but they are still here. Or they may not be here yet, but they are here in some capacity. Um, who else is here? Members of the press. Um, you want to talk about members of the press? Uh, there are people who are journalists, and we call them press. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough about Dating that. Dating back to the days of Babylon. <laughs> um, you want somewhere in the middle. Um, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm afraid of you right now. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so uh, we allow press in. Uh, they identify themselves. They have a separate badge. It doesn't look anything like any of your badges. It's like a three by five glossy oh, yeah, thing that says press. Oh yeah, we're so cheap. Amanda um, Berlin, are we cheap? We're cheap with the press, aren't we? We are. She's like, oh yeah. Very cheap with the press. They don't get much of anything. Um, press, we feel, is important to be here and be part of the conversation and to document what's going on. Uh, we also think uh, that uh, press can become something that you know turn a lot of this into, into you know more of a circus than it needs to be. So we actually limit the amount of press that we have here. Um, they we don't. Are, we don't invite anybody either. Like we don't send out a press release about Chmukan ahead of time. I, I mean, they have to know about us. To, yeah contact us. And so, um, you know, we, we make sure that, um, you know, the, the, you know we, we have a reasonable amount of press, we have a reasonable coverage, um, and usually we allow one per publication, which gets weird because they're like, I'd like to bring my camera crew and my producer. We're like, that's cool. They can yep. have a drink upstairs at the bar if they want. Um, you know, we don't let them down here. We don't, we're not big on, you know, big production or whatever. But again, we think it's important that they're part of the conversation. And I think having individual members of the press from individual publications uh, leads to, uh, c- to good conversations. Do you want to do the feel good last one? What's the, oh, I hate people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> cheers. <laughs> um, actually, honestly, like, um, uh, 
you know, we're glad that you all come to this, that you're here, uh, that you have the opportunity to learn uh, and to meet other like-minded and unlike-minded people. Uh, one of the reasons we started this thing 15 years ago, uh, Beetle's here somewhere. He was at the Genesis. He was the Genesis. That cat took out a second mortgage on his house to make Without the first, telling his wife. Without telling his wife. Uh, to start the first ShmooCon 15 years ago. Um, and the whole premise of the event was to facilitate uh, discourse, right? To be able to have an honest conversation between the people on stage and the audience. Oh, is it the slide at the end? Am I ahead of myself? Yes. <sighs> All right, I didn't read the slides. She put them together, so. Um, so um, that, this is, this is only the second year I've used these slides, thank you. Thank you, Space Rock. On the con though, those slides, those slides are getting sloppy. <laughs> Um, check out that badge. That was Schmukon One's badge when our budget was like nothing. Oh, it was cute. It, it had a smiley face. It took me like three weeks to do the art. <laughs> uh, so, so I do um, uh, uh, a fair, mo well, not all of a it. A fair bit. A fair bit of the art, um, like T-shirt design and that kind of thing. And I do a lot of other odds and ends. Uh, and I look back, like I am not a graphics designer by trade, uh, and I started doing, literally like designing things like that 15 <laughs> years ago in Corel Draw, and be like, I made a perfectly round circle. And then the next year I realized like you can hold down shift and make a perfectly round <laughs> circle. Like, wow, that was way easier than I thought it would be. Um, and, and now I, Heidi can come up with ideas and I can usually make them a real thing in an hour or two, where it used to take me days. Like the old, uh, the, for anyone that was around with the Moose uh, Pink Floyd thing with the light coming in the back, Back in the freaking rainbow, that was like a day and a half of labor for me. And when I was done, I was so excited. And I look at that now, I'm like, I could seriously do that in the next five minutes, right? Um, <laughs> show up. Well, yeah, I'm just I'm like, what I'm, is this? Like, look at me, graphic I'm, artist. No, but <laughs> second job. I, oh, I had a point. <laughs> What's your point? What's your point? No, nope, no. Nope, oh, no he's, point, oh, nope. oh he, um, yes, he's going to talk about learning new skills. Nope, I'm oh. not going to talk about anything. I'm certainly not going to say not talking well, about shit. Well, this is going to get real. <laughs> This just got really short. <laughs> okay, so um, what? I, th there's talks. This is like a fake talk. Cons don't, have this talks. This doesn't count. Yeah. Okay, that was the joke last year. Shut up. It's a joke every year. It is the joke every year. <laughs> <laughs> it got awkward. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say like you're up. It's up. Uh, what? You go. You're up. No. Okay. Oh. I don't know. I, I, I got confused. We have, we, have, we have events. They're listed right there. If you, since, since we let you down the hall early, you may or may not have seen some of these already. Um, wireless CTF, Lockpick Village. Uh, there's uh, radio exams happening on Saturday, so you still have time to study. Um, Schmuganography, uh, barcode, schmarcode, and uh, fire talks are tonight after the main tracks are finished. Schmucon Labs which is a grand experiment every year. Every year. And um, Hack Fortress. So a couple things. For barcode barcode, there are things scattered all over the con that are part of the contest. That is not correct. There's not? That is not correct. Oh, not barcode barcode for um, uh, shmooganography. Sorry. Shmooganography. I will say there are two things that aren't part of the contest, but are fine examples of how Illustrator doesn't have spell check. Um, <laughs> Well, well, you it, speakers, take a look at your badge and yeah, tell me what's wrong Yeah, the speaker badge may have Australia spelled wrong. Um, <laughs> that's my fault. Um, also, the Buffett room may have presentation spelled wrong. That's my fault as well. And even after I noticed it was spelled wrong, I fixed it, and I still screwed it up. So um, those are not part of the contest. I just want to help you out there. There's no messaging. I just can't spell. What? I'm part of management now, yeah. That's, that's my problem. It's not something else. Um, do we want to talk about labs now? or? Um, you, can, you can talk about labs. Or do labs. we have a slide for? I don't have a slide for labs. Talk about labs briefly. OK, uh, so Shmukon Labs, uh, we've been doing this for a long time. And the idea uh, is that instead of having formal training like you might have at other events, uh, what we have are people and vendors who are part of the industry that are providing networking and security and detection services and whatever, um, and people apply to participate in labs, uh, and they can sit down with um, kind of these experts and the vendors, and they can learn from them throughout the course of the week. Uh, the weekend. They actually run the production network here. Uh, they they put... pay money to come here and set up our network, and in addition, they also unload my truck for me when I get here. So it's a beautiful deal for Schmoocon. 
<laughs> if you want to give us 50 bucks, you can do it next year too. Um, but That's our pitch. <laughs> yeah, it's it's total, total air pitch. Give us 50 bucks and unload our truck. Um, <laughs> But it's been uh, a, a really good experiment. I think people have learned a lot over the years being able to work and actually build a real thing. You know, this isn't like a, a lab where you build a thing and it doesn't get used. Like if you screw up, I don't know, DHCP, like nobody at the conference can use the internet. So you learn real quick not to screw up DHCP. Um, and, and now uh, starting last year, we added like an operational component to it. Um, in the past years, it was all just like kind of defensive control, static controls. Uh, and then we're like, well, real networks get used and monitored in real time. And so now there's an operational component where we actually watch the network and people can use um, uh, SIM tools and things of that nature as well. Cool. 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 Oh, goodness. Um, so contests, we mentioned some of them. The vendors have contests. They're everywhere. Look for them. You probably see like little Cody things on other things. Um, not all of them relate to each other. They might be different contests, so have fun with that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Next time we'll use different fonts or something. I don't know. Um, Saturday Night Party is happening in this room um, starting at 9. The chairs will be on. <laughs> Yeah, right. it's like a concert where you have assigned seating. Like you get to sit there and drink all night. All right. <laughs> no, this room actually kind of totally transforms for the party if you haven't been to it before. It is, it is an all ages party. Um, you just have to have your badge to get in. A um, little bit different this year. So, um, I'm kind of scared. So it is open host, so it's open bar for soda, um, non-alcoholic drinks, uh, beer and wine. Mm -hmm. And I, I did go for like the upgraded beer, so it's not just Miller Lite, okay? So you're, you're good. Um, you don't know what the upgrade was too, so that's a lot of applause to get Budweiser. What? Schlitz. Genesee Cream Ale for all you need. Jenny Cream Ale, people. yeah. That's the worst beer in the world right yeah. there. If you want to get hung over looking at a can of beer, it's Jenny Cream. It might be the one thing that tastes better skunked. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, so any spirits, though, any liquor is cash bar, that's on you. Okay, so we're doing it this way. Um, we're going to try it this way this year because I, those drink tickets the previous years, they were a, such a huge headache for me. The, op the open hosted, um, I keep wanting to combine the words. I'm trying really hard not to. Beer, wine, and non-alcoholic drinks. Um, is still the same, right? Except now it's upgraded beer. So I, I kind of did away with the spirits, but now you have better beer. So um, non-alcoholic drinks. So it should in, it should include it should include the Red Bull. I'll check on that, but I believe it's all non-alcoholic drinks. So <laughs> yeah, now now you're all like, forget the alcohol. Yeah. We'll just get high on caffeine. Just, it's kind of the same thing. I'm okay with that. Um, so, yeah, you just need your badge to get in. Okay, so parking, um, we do have a 25% discount on self-park. I have been informed, though, that the parking garage is probably full by now. So they're, um, they're sending people to another parking garage nearby. To, to get the parking discount, if you are staying at the hotel and on the Shmukon block, you, your key card should automatically apply that to your room when you leave. If you are not on the block, you are probably going to be our problem children if you're staying at the hotel. They have an attendant down in the parking garage from, I think it's noon to 8. Um, and you just need to tell that attendant that you're with the conference and you should get the discount. Anyone who leaves after that time, you can come up and get a parking pass from us at Reg. Now, keep in mind, we won't be at the, park, at the Reg after, at that time. So come get them earlier in the day if you're going to be leaving after 8 p.m. That makes sense? Okay. T-shirt charities. Um, this is another thing we've been doing now for, I think, well over a decade. Yes. I think so, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A long time. So we technically don't sell you T-shirts. We are giving you a free T-shirt in return for your $15 donation. You get to, um, you give us the money, we give you a T-shirt. We also give you a poker chip. And there are three buckets sitting up at um, registration. Those uh, buckets represent three different charities. This year they are... Um, uh, Hackers for Charity, EFF, and the new this year is the No Starch Press Foundation. Woo! Yeah. Um, do you want to? What? Do you want to say anything about T-shirt charities? Sure. Okay. I'll even say something constructive. Okay. Good. Um, so uh, T-shirt charities uh, partially is driven by the fact that we don't want to sell T-shirts in D.C. and have to deal with D.C. sales tax. Um, <laughs> 
This is actually my accountant's suggestion. Yeah, he's like, maybe you shouldn't sell shirts and just have it be a donation. We're like, that's brilliant. So we actually give you give away that. Um, so that's again as a cost of the con. If you're interested in learning about like how much it costs to run a conference and that kind of thing, um, you also on another slide. on another slide, we'll address it in the future. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we've raised uh, tens of thousands of dollars over the years for, for uh, various uh, charities through um, the t-shirt charity stuff. Uh, it, 15 bucks for a shirt is not a bad deal. They're good shirts. Um, well, I, more importantly, every single bit of that is going towards the charity of your choice, the organization directly. of your choice. Um, t-shirt sales will start at three? Three? three. Okay, we're, all, we're just going to say three. three. When, when this is over, you should be able to go buy t-shirts. Um, Tomorrow, I will. We have some limited bags of crap. Who knows what a bag of crap is from Schmoocon? Okay, bags of crap are literally filled with the things that like fall out of boxes in our storage unit, or like just old swag. Um, they'll, I, they're bags of crap. Like all of that money also goes to charity, so you'll be given a chip in exchange for those funds as well, and you'll get to drop that in the bucket of your choice. So, don't complain if you don't get anything cool. It's all cool. It's got a logo on it. What? Nothing. Um, so I do want to tell a story about shirts real quick in my regards to, again, my lesson about getting better at graphics design. Okay. Someone in the audience is wearing a shirt that I designed for ShmooCon like 10 years ago. And told story it's got before. a bar graph. I know I've told the story, but this is for the new people in the Who's audience. Who's new? Actually, who is new? Who is this? Who? Oh, I See, love look, that. they've never heard this story. See, Space Rogue, this is who we give the talk to. <laughs> anyway. Um, I didn't know how to make things snap to a grid, and so um, I made a little rectangle and placed it between other rectangles, so they were all equidistant apart. And I he made was a little like laying tile. Like I made a bar graph. I made a goddamn bar graph. It took me six hours, um, and it's it's like four rectangles, and there's like an x and y axis, and I had some cute little freaking thing. Um, and then uh, I had taken the rectangle and I drug it down to the bottom of the artboard. <laughs> And then I shipped it off to the, the uh, t-shirt people for production. And they, we've worked with them for a long time. So they don't send us proofs because they're like, they know what they're doing. Or they're, they do, and I don't know it's not supposed to be there. Yeah. Right? And so, <laughs> so <laughs> the shirts come, t-shirt. and I take it out of the box, and there's this barcode. And then right over your belly button, there's a rectangle. Is anybody wearing? It's like a sage green t-shirt yeah, with a bar graph. Somebody it's, has that on? I, I saw somebody walking around with it. Anyone? With a, he's back here. Yeah, he's right. back there. You want to stand You're up? Like, so like, can, can you just can stand you up here? so we can all look at you so, now? So there it is. You see the rectangle down in your belly? button? No, it's right there. Yeah, he's pointing at the rectangle. That's, and we sold out of those, <laughs> and no one ever asked, what's the rectangle for? There's only five rectangles, and I understand why like four of them are there. I think it was a there. unit of measure. What's the fifth? Just because. It's a unit of measure. It's a unit like, of measure. A rectangle. One. It's like a hectare. Nobody knows how big it really is. All right. Communist. <laughs> I'm from Britain. Right. What? So, so uh, we've given you, a lot of you have heard this information before. Many of you have not. The biggest secret we have is that it's all in your bag. It's in your program. Like, look at the program. Look in your bag. Um, there's, I like to do some fun things with the bags. So you should always look in your bag. I'm going to say it one more time. Look in your bag. Some of you will be very happy. You get also, a car. You get a car. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give away cars. But also in your bag, this is really super exciting, is a shoulder strap. Yeah. yeah. So, so the Who knows what the bags are? Dry bags. OK, just to let you guys know, like we take, I take, we take the swag stuff really seriously. So Bruce and I stuffed one of these full of paper towels and put it in our shower. For like 20 minutes. For like 20 minutes. I was like, I'm not handing these out if they are going to leak. So we tested the bags. Um, they, they do stay dry. Now, if they're not... We didn't test I mean, each one individually. That's true. <laughs> Just, we tested a sample. And our water bill that month was really high. No. <laughs> I did almost flood the bathroom because it covered the drain. So <laughs> I caught it before it did that. Sometimes I'm smart. Wow. Anyway, look in your bags. All right, so what if there's changes? Um, Twitter is probably the best place, but we'll make announcements at the start of each talk as we go along through the day. So um, Twitter talks, um, it's super important. I'll put something up on the website, but reality is probably not too much this weekend. You'll note this year there is no keynote 
we decided to do away with the keynote for the year to see how that went um, and added a little more space on the one track mind because um, I think we got feedback in general that people are getting a lot of value out of the shorter talks. So you'll also see, this is the first time we've done shorter talks in the other three? Or no, did we, we did it last we year. We did it last too. year too. Um, also, we did not have one track mind, but that's okay. Oh, we didn't? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just making shit up. That's fine. He does. It's all good. It's all good. Um, and then the final, never would have known. if you stick around to the ice storm at the end of it, uh, <laughs> we're going to be doing a talk show um, called Between Two Moose as our closing plenary. Yeah, right? I'm Jack. Do you all remember that big giant moose from last year? Yeah, I have two we, of we them. We got now. another one. <laughs> Super excited. So I, I, we're going to vote. I want to name the moose. What do you guys think of star and gate? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That was good. <laughs> Dude, you need to be quiet or I'm going to rescind the rule about taking it home twice in two years. So, should we tell the legend of the Stargate? Um, yeah, okay. No, the Stargate's actually falling apart. If anybody would like to come... Do some Stargate restoration. Do we have anyone who specializes in Stargate restoration? Mike, where's anyone? Mike Bowen? There's a cosplayer right there. She's going to help us out. There, there, the original creators could probably help us out. Actually, I was really mad when it went, I think it was to RIT, because they actually reinforced it all before bringing it back to me. Yeah. You should, you're supposed to let it fall apart. Um, so the Stargate was originally part of a schmuganography contest five years ago now? Longer than that. Six years ago? Yeah. I mean, the Stargate's really falling apart. Maybe it was longer. Um, and it was just, they just had it in the, in the hallway as part of the puzzle, and it had all these lights on it, and it was really cool. Was, I don't remember if it was the orange one or the purple one. I, you know, I don't know what season we were watching. or I, Anyway, so it was part, it was part of this puzzle. The only puzzle. true Stargate's the movie. The, the, the series is terrible. Fight me! Fight me! Come on! So at the end of the, um, the conference, um, I can't remember who it was, but some really brilliant individual had the idea that we should auction it off to come home with the potters. Yeah, 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 it was a brilliant idea. Brought back the next year. So, um, so that happened, and so in the spirit of pleasing all of you, we brought it back the next year. And I got really smart. I said, well, it can't come home with me twice. It's got to it's gotta visit somebody new every year. So, um, it's been auctioned off every year since, and some poor souls had to go home with it. I, um, uh, it's huge. It was, uh, yeah. You it's don't been, really have to go home with it. You don't have to go home with it. We will unit. store it if you want. Haim had it over his door, question mark, at RIT. Uh, he was a professor at RIT, and he had, he had to walk through the Stargate to get into his office. So if you're looking to dress up your office environment, you know, uh, it's a good a really accessory. Nice headboard. Um, it's been to a wedding. It was a, it was a, what do they call that? The picture the, booth? The photo at booth a, at, a at a wedding. Yeah, yeah it's um, been around. Like, if you want a piece of like history, been on the, been we on the should target. have had people signing it every time they took it home. We but, should have. You know, whatever. We can sign it retroactively. Where is it right now? It's in Reg falling apart. I think it's in more pieces than it was originally. Oh, so sad. Easier to transport. Easier to transport. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, so the schedule um, this year is in your program. It's in that little paper guide. Y'all looked in your bags and found the paper guide. Um, it's on there. It's also on the banners that sit outside the rooms. It's also online. We link to um, Confu, the mobile version, as well. So no excuses. You know when things are happening. Unless we got the times wrong, and then I'm sorry. <laughs> Has happened. Um, this is the conference floor map. Now, this map is also on those guides. It's in your programs. It's not online, but it is on the back of every single staff member. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Bobby. So we are standing in One Track Mind and Bring It On. Build It is that way. That way. Build It is that way. Belay It is that way. Um, and you can figure out the rest of the rooms, but now you know. Now you can talk about facilitating discourse. Oh, thanks. I, yeah, this is where I meant to show up and talk about this. Um, so when we started ShmooCon, we really, um, actually probably the genesis of, we were at, I think Beetle and me and a handful of other Shmoo were at Black Hat, um, and somebody on stage said something that was patently false. And um, normally we're the type of people who'd be like, well, that's bullshit, and uh, call them on it, but we decided to let somebody else do it and have fun, and no one did. 
And I remember Beetle saying, we wouldn't let that stand. I'm like, no, we wouldn't. He's like, we should do our own con where we don't let those things happen. I'm like, good idea. And then the rest of us forgot about it and Beetle decides to go start a conference. Um, and so when we were starting the conference, we, we had the discussion, like, how do you facilitate discourse, right? Because you can put a microphone in the middle of the room and let people go ask questions. And what you're going to get is, I don't really have as much of a question so much as a comment. Um, <laughs> And you're going to get somebody's life story, and then you're going to want to hit them with a chair. Um, and, but it's, it's hard to actually have a real discourse, because you only have an hour or 50 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever the thing is. So how do you encourage the audience to participate with the speakers? And so what we decided to do, um, what? Well, no, they came to me, and they're like, OK, so Heidi, we'd like to get these balls, and we'd like to throw them at the speakers. So, um, and I said, hmm. Brilliant. That's I what said, she said. Yeah, said I, it I was said, a great I idea said, with zero liability. Right. So you'll notice the first year, because I was so afraid of throwing things at people, I got these really super squishy yellow foam. They're like sponges, except they are lighter than sponges. Like you throw them and they go, go bloop. Yep. Like there's no mass to them at all. Um, they just, they bloop. Yeah, they're like the cheap knockoff ner Nerf balls, you know, the ones you got as a kid and you were like, had to pretend to be happy with. So, um, so they were awful, and then so year two I was still nervous, and so I decided, well, we'll do ping pong balls, and I'll get ping pong ball shooters for everybody, except what I didn't know. There's an ISO standard for ping pong balls, <laughs> and uh, we bought balls who weren't uh, to the, built to the ISO standard. So I don't know if you know anything about a ping pong ball gun, but um, the way that they work is there's a membrane and the ball has to push up against it, and then you push a bunch of air behind it until it overcomes the force of the membrane, like and then little, it like, cork pops things, loose. You know? If the ball is too small, it never seals with the little membrane, and the air just goes whoosh past it. <laughs> and the ball sits there in the little gun. So we, we and then people get frustrated, <laughs> they shake it, and then they throw the gun at the speaker instead. So it's we, totally not OK. We <laughs> had all this like passive-aggressive whooshing going on. <laughs> whoosh. It's really stupid. <laughs> so, so the next year, Still being nervous, I got like 17 samples of stress foam balls sent to me and picked the softest one. But we finally fell on something that worked. Until we decided not to do it again, <laughs> we took away the schmoo balls and armed everybody with whiteboards. <laughs> what, what bad would come of that? <laughs> I cannot imagine. There was, at no point at the, the Potter That's household would we think, this might be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what they would draw on it that isn't constructive. <laughs> <laughs> we have such faith in humanity, it's ridiculous. So, so not only did we give people little signs in which to draw things on, but then <laughs> Ethan and a bunch of folks, we had people design a moose that would sit over your shoulder and you could vote online based on like how much shit you thought was coming from the speaker. And if it hit a high enough threshold, <laughs> the moves would go <laughs> it all, all light up and everything. But the problem was it wasn't real time because the speaker would say something stupid and then people got to take out their phone, they got to figure out what network to connect to. Okay, now I'm connected, now I got to go to the it's website. Like now four I minutes the later. Yeah, like four minutes later, the speaker's in the middle of like, uh, well then, <laughs> like what the hell? I, and after, Wait, I think we disconnected. We just after killed it the after the first talk. day. We're like, that's <laughs> weird feedback. Yeah, yeah. It's like training a dog. And <laughs> you're doing every time the dog says something normal, you're like, bad dog. You're like, oh shit. So we yeah. went back to stress balls the next year. We did. We did go back to stress balls. Now this year, due to the theme, um, you, you got a schmountain, as coined by my eight-year-old, a schmountain. They're kind of hard. And Anything will go pointy. straight if you throw it hard enough. Um, so you'll note in, in the program, which you are all going to read, um, we ask you kindly not to <laughs> bean. Um, well, I think I use some other words, you know, to gently lob if you're going to throw your schmoo ball. Gently lob. If there's one thing I've learned over the years of having schmoo balls is that we're not the most coordinated group of people. <laughs> except one, one except person's that lob photo. Another person's rocket. Like, how'd you throw it that hard? Like, <laughs> Oh this, this is the most amazing Schmoocon photo I think ever taken. You're yeah, thanks, Carson. It's, um... No, Dude, that was launcher. so stinky. Oh, no good. Um, so on Saturday, um, I think it's the last talk of the day. Bruce and I will do an Own the Con session. It's where we talk about all the internals. We're pretty transparent about all our finances, about what happens behind the scenes. 
Um, if you want to know more, you're certainly welcome to come to that session, but no, it's taped. You don't have to be there. We will talk to an empty room. It'll be, that would be exciting. <laughs> hey, hey, Space Rug, we do use the same slides for that. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, those are getting really messy. Um, but we do, yeah, so if you want to know more, you can always watch it later. I, we've got two other great speakers on at the same time as us, and I don't mean to detract from them at all. Go to their talks, don't come to ours. You can watch it later online. So all, just if, for those that are here, this may not be that important to you, but all the tapes are, are all the talks are streamed in real time. Uh, and all the Hi, talks, people at home. Hi, Hi internet. Um, and all the talks are archived and available on archive.org archive archive not long after uh, we're done with the con. So it takes about a week. It takes about a week to get them all up there. So uh, just so you know, if you, something happens here and you want to watch it again, you can go watch it for free. There's no ads. There's nothing. Just go enjoy the talk and learn the second time. I think we're ad-free on our streaming now. Yes, I think we're ad free. As of we, three we minutes before the talk, sign up this, until today. We yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. Um, how? So how do we do this? We do this with a tremendous, tremendous amount of help. We've got 90 amazing volunteers, all in purple shirts. Um, please take a moment to thank them if you see them, and you should see them because they're everywhere. They're in purple. Purple. And, and, and it says staff. You don't have to thank everybody you see in a purple shirt. Or you can. You can. There's a few non-staff people wearing a purple shirt. If you want to have a good time, thank them. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> um, but also support from the community at large. This is, I mean, anybody who runs an event knows that it takes, takes a lot of help and support. So, Ooh. Cool. All right. This is the part where I walk away. Good job. Power in fear. Power in fear. Yeah, now we all get to swear on the count of three. Uh, we're going to Carlin seven dirty words in alphabetical order. Go. Am I two or three? You were, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. It wasn't logged. Um, so every year um, I, get I get to give like a pseudo keynote and yell at everybody and things like that. And for some of you, yeah, woo, some of you look forward to it. Some of you are actually leaving because you think I really don't want to be here. Um, <laughs> I actually called out someone walking out of one of my talks once, and it turns out it was a client of mine. Um, I was like, hey, you, sir, am I not being entertaining? He turned around, I'm like, oh, I'm not getting paid. I'm like, that sucks. So um, what, uh, you know, every year, some years I put in a lot of effort, and some years I just get up here and wing it, and the results are always the same. Um, but I do spend a lot of time, and, and Heidi and I spend a lot of time uh, before the con reflecting on, like, what's happened in the last year, what's changed, how... Uh, has the environment around cybersecurity or security or infosec or whatever you want to call it, how has it evolved and how are we going to have a conversation around that while we're here. So we think about that when we're looking at talks, we think about that when we're looking at ideas for events and things like that, uh, and, and we spend a lot of time uh, at home um, and with friends talking about like what are the big things that we, we care about. And so, uh, you know, it was an interesting year for a lot of reasons, like uh, it's an exciting time to be alive in the United States, like without a doubt. Um, but I also like, you know, come to recognize, you know, at, at this event, and this is not unique, but, um, you know, at, at a lot of security conferences, there are people that have been doing this a long time, right? There are people who have been, I, I've been doing this for 20 odd years, which I guess now seems like a long time, uh, and, and, but I still think like I'm still figuring my stuff out. See, I said stuff instead of shit. And, um, <laughs> cheater, cheater. Um, there are other people who have been here for 40 years doing this stuff, and they think that long-haired guy on stage is just saying the same thing that I said back in the 70s, and it's probably true, right? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that hasn't changed, and there's a lot of new people, right? You're, you're just getting into the industry, you might be young or, or older, and you're just getting into cybersecurity, and you're like, what do I need to worry about? And, and I keep thinking of um, the talks that I've given over the years, and the places that I've spoken, and the events that I've been to, and what helped shape me, and then the feedback that I've gotten, um, that people said, hey, you know, Bruce, you said this, and this was really helpful. Um, I've been st starting all of my talks that I've been giving for, I think, most of my professional career, dating back at least 15 years, with the same basic premise of don't believe anything I'm telling you, right? I am no different than anybody else that gets up on stage. Um, I largely just make this up as I go along, uh, and sometimes it's good made up science and sometimes it's just pretend science, but whatever. Um, I, I was struck early. I gave my first talk, I think at like DEF CON 8 or something like that. And I was worried, like super worried that when I got there, I would give my talk and somebody would call me out and be like, you're full of shit. And then that was it. And that was going to be my time. Like my life as a hacker and security professional was over. And I gave my talk and people came up like, that was really cool. And no one called me out. I'm like, well, that was weird. And so the second year I got up and gave a talk and 
said a bunch of stuff and nobody called me out. Third year I got up and I actually just made some stuff up. <laughs> nobody called me out. And I'm like, wait a minute, like, that's totally not okay, right? Like, we should be having some sort of, of dialogue. And this industry has done nothing but grow in my time, right? 20 years, you'd think this was the size of DEF CON 20 years ago, right? Maybe a little bit bigger, but not much. Um, and, and now there's a security conference like every day. This is a multi-billion, hundreds of billions of dollar industry. There's billions of VC being poured into this. Um, you know, it, times have changed, um, but yet, in a lot of ways, uh, when you come to an event like this, the people getting up on stage haven't, right? They're presenting their ideas, their concepts, their opinions in a lot of time, and it's on you to figure out what to take away from that, right? It's on you to try to understand the facts and the opinion and to figure out um, you know, why, why you should believe this person or why you're skeptical and then challenge yourself. I know I struggle with this. I've got, I get complacent. You get old, you get complacent. All the old people will go, yeah, that's true. I don't care anymore. Um, <laughs> Um, and I find it harder and harder to have this mindset now as I'm farther along in my career, right? When I was young, there's been a discussion on Twitter recently about you have to have passion to be in cybersecurity. And there was very interesting dialogue about like, is passion important or is passion just gonna burn you out? Like what does actual passion mean? It's fascinating discussion and trolling and whatever. Um, but I know when I was early in my career, you know, I founded the Shmoo Group uh, partially because I wanted to be with a bunch of like-minded people and doing projects and cool things and experimenting and trying to learn as much as I can. And I would rather do that with a group of people where we could do more collectively than we could possibly do as individuals. And so that's what the genesis uh, of the Shmoo Group was. As we've gotten older, we've all got jobs, we've all got families, and I don't have a lab in my basement anymore, right? I don't have a lab in Amazon, right? Like I don't have a bunch of instances of crap that I run and I play around with and, and whatever. Um, I like, I don't know, I, I do maintenance on my house, um, I mow my lawn, hang out with my kids and my wife. Um, sometimes I do something geeky, but usually it involves Windows Update and I swear a lot. Um, <laughs> and, and I find that I'm actually less curious professionally than I used to be. Right? So when you're just getting into this and you're learning lots of things, it's pretty easy because you don't have well-formed thoughts about like, what do I believe and not believe? So it's very easy to say like, I don't believe that and I believe this. As we get older and we get more like concrete, it's harder for us to challenge ourselves and say like, I don't believe this thing anymore. So the industry's gotten huge, industry's evolved, um, but what parts of the industry have changed? What parts have stayed static? What are the things that I need to personally and maybe you all need to challenge as you move forward? So, um, I will take Windows Update as an example. Aww. Aww. So, <laughs> you said it. You said I would talk about Someone Who said I was going to talk about Windows Update? Somebody else did, and I actually thought, that's a great idea. I'll sling the whole thing off of Windows Update. Um, so, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, every once in a while you'll see me rage tweet about Windows Update. <laughs> and. As an example, here were three Surface I that I was updating, um, and it was all non-deterministic, right? They're all the same patch level, they're all running the same operating system, and I opened them up for the first time in a year, because that's the way ShmooCon operates. There's a big storage unit where everything lives, and once a year we open it up and be like, what died, right? <laughs> that died, that died, we need a new projector, three new surfaces, and a new one of those. Cool, and then you upgrade everything else, and the upgrade process for Windows Update is just a magical experience, right? <laughs> Where I'm like, I don't know anything about Windows, and I'm just going to be a user and go, boop, and update. <laughs> and then I wait, and I see what happens. And sometimes it works, and every time it doesn't, right? <laughs> and by that I mean, at some point it'll be like, here is an update, I will apply it for you. You're like, thank you. I am complete, I am up to date. You turn around, and you're like, I have some updates for you, would you like me to do it? I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, seriously, so, what you can't, language, yeah, phrasing, so, I don't know if you can see this one, but it says, your device is up to date, get in your update ready. No, fuck you too. Like, and I will rage post this stuff, right? and I will get answers that include what you need to do is the following. Download the out of band patch thingy and install it and then set this GPO thing and do this other thing and then rip out the registry and flip it over because it's installed upside down, right? 
That's my assessment of Windows administration, by the way. It's like, it's like Star Trek. Like, oh, the phase inverter is inverted. Oh, okay, there, that's, now it updates. Um, and no good comes of it. Like, I, I've had boxes that have completely reinstalled because, like, I'm applying an update. Please wait. Rolling back patches. Damn it. Uh, applying an update. Please wait. Rolling back patches. After four of those, it either is a ballistic laptop or I reinstall it, right? <sighs> okay. I'm not here to slag on Windows Update only, but, but um, what I struggle with is I'm reasonably intelligent when it comes to computers, right? My first operating system was Linux, and then I started using Windows and FreeBSD and OS X. I've, I'm reasonably good at my trade, right? Windows Update is a goddamn mystery to me. <laughs> like, I, I'm dead serious. I, I can't get my head around what it's doing at any point. Updating, initializing, installing, what do those words mean? What is initialize? Are you deleting my hard drive? Like, I don't understand what these words mean. So, what we tell... <laughs> I'm rather proud of that one. There's actually a website you can just go to, like, I need a book cover, and you can just make book covers. <laughs> That's what I did. I played around with that a lot last night. Uh, so what do we tell users to do to stay secure? Patch your shit, right? Period. Like, that's A number one. How do attackers break into networks? They exploit things that you haven't patched. What are you supposed to do? Patch your shit. Sweet. Got it. Good message. Boink. And then a magical mystery peyote vision quest happens, right? And you're like, yay! If I'm not technical, I just assume everything's okay. Like, every time I hit update, it does something. The box reboots. It says there's more to do, but I'm kind of sick of rebooting my box. I wouldn't mind using the computer once in a while, so I'm just going to let it sit there. Because then I'll hear things like, oh, wait, you really? Well, it's because you're trying to install 1807. Like, no, I'm trying to install 2019, asshole. Like, that's not a thing. Like, versions of Windows don't matter to most people. The fact that there's a service pack, no one cares. They just want their computer to work. And I, Windows Update is just an example, but it's a symptom of a problem where we say, hey, user, do the following. And then the following is the most confusing thing. It's differential calculus to most people, right? Like, you go home, you meet with your family, you're the tech wizard. Right? We all know. I mean, you go home, your, your, your parents are like, this thing is really broke. Like, mom, it's a VCR. Like, I don't know how to tell you, but you just shove the Blu-ray disc inside the VCR, and it's all really angry. But what you need to do is modify your GPO, <laughs> open up command.exe. Um, these are not things that mortal people can do, right? These aren't things that technical people can do. And it turns out our targets aren't static, right? We are living in a time where technology is evolving and evolving and evolving, and we think we know what we're doing, but it turns out in a lot of ways um, we don't. Oops, I'll get back to my hand under the faucet in a second. Um, <laughs> I want to go here first. So um, Harun tweeted this um, earlier this year after reInvent, and it really struck me, right? Um, in the p previous 10, 15 years, I've done a lot of uh, crazy government and commercial stuff and broken into places and done all kinds of neat things. Um, and now I work at an organization that we're cloud native, right? Like everything we do is DevOps. It's really fast. We don't own any of our own computers, anything like that. And the developers are constantly just grabbing widgets from places and using them, right? And they go to reInvent. They're like, I have a whole new way to run our, our company. You're like, no, we just figured out last year after you went to reInvent what to do. Like, <laughs> We're going to do it again differently now? Like, who did Amazon put out of business this week? Uh, right, uh, right, sorry. I mean, no. If you run a little company that's being successful doing something that Amazon's not doing well, there's a reasonable possibility you won't exist after the next reInvent. Amazon's like, now we do it well. Ah, damn it. Uh, so when you, when you look at the way people are building modern systems and you look at the languages, you've got Go, you've got Rust, you've got Corrosion, whatever the hell all the different languages are called, like, it's... I like that. <laughs> Michelle's going to lose it off of that. Um, we don't have good tools around that. Like, I've done a lot of work, at, well, a fair bit. I'm no expert, but I've done a fair bit of work around static and dynamic analysis of systems. Um, and if you look at classical languages, C, C++, Java, I'm calling Java classical language, and my soul just left the building. But um, <laughs> it's been around a bit. 
And so if, if you look at these classical languages, like we have reasonable analysis tools against them. But we live in a time where like any random person is like, I made a new language that makes web development easier. And there's a bunch of web development people like, Wee! and they just go right at it. <laughs> By the way, the package management system is public and anyone can contribute to it. And the namespace is public. And if anyone decides to stop maintaining parts of the namespace, the thing that you use to figure out, I don't know, addition is now a crypto miner, right? <laughs> like, God bless NPM. So. How are most companies geared up and ready to deal with problems involving NPM, right? How are you protecting yourself from corruption of that namespace, corruption of those packages? Do you pay attention to what your developers are integrating into their system? And more importantly, what those packages integrate and those packages, it's NPM all the way down, right? Eventually, there's a little processor at the bottom. The processor's written in NPM. It's like, hey, what's up? I used to be silicon. Now I'm magical pixie dust. <laughs> when you look at that and you think about the things that you've seen on these stages, if you've been to more than a non-zero amount of these kind of events, you've seen things that you've heard and, and you think, man, that's, that's great news. That's a good way of doing things. What you'll find is in five years, that thing you learned that you thought was great is obsolete, right? We are really moving quickly. More and more large organizations are getting to the point where they're um, uh, you know, going away from existing small data or large data center kind of installations, going to the cloud, going to more virtualization. Duh, like everybody knows this, but the reality is security is a trailing thing, right? We're always playing catch up. We're playing catch up in organizations, we're playing catch up with technology. And when you look at things, if you go to reInvent as an example, and I use this, I'm poking fun at Amazon, but they push the envelope like nobody else can, right? They got a lot of money, they got a lot of people, they're all smart, they're solving problems for big companies, it's going great. If you as a security professional go to reInvent and you think, that's new, that's new, that's new, I don't understand any of that, that should terrify you, right? That should be something you think, I gotta challenge my base assumption, right? Because that's the kind of thing that can obsolete me as a person. So, um, you know, when I think about, I'll get to that in a second. When I, <laughs> there, there, there is a story there. Um, when I think about users, I don't mean just like average users, I even mean people like us, I mean our developers. Ask developers how to write secure code. If you code in Go, how do you write secure Go? I, uh, I SSH into the box. So there's transec, I guess, in my hard drives and zipped, encrypted, so data at rest, secure coding, ha <laughs> ha! Like, no, that's not what I mean. Um, there's not good tools out there regardless of your role. We have security tools that are like differential calculus, right? There are things that we look at like, I can't figure out how to use this damn thing. We've all had those tools. We have operating systems that are like that. Um, you know, I, I struggle a lot with, you know, kind of petty guidance tell people to patch, tell people not to click links, to whatever, when the reality is that's just not true. What we need are more secure foundational systems that allow users to click on anything they want, to have one big button that just says, poof, security, right? Like, I just need it to be easy. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't require any thought. But yet, in 2019, we still don't have flying cars, and there's no big red security button. Um, and what this does is incentivizes really terrible behavior, right? Users, all of us, will do bad things because it's hard, right? It's hard to configure a network securely, right? I, I have uh, Ubiquiti, wireless uh, at home. I have, every time I add a new one, it seems like some other part of the network just breaks, right? And then I have to walk over and I have to find a pin and I stick it in the back, wait 10 seconds of factory reset it, and then I go back over to the console and I hit adopt, and it comes back to life. Why? I have no goddamn idea. <laughs> But that's my user experience, right? The thing emits all this information, like here's a bunch of packets. I'm like, I don't know, I, I used to do a lot of Wi-Fi, but I, I, I think that was a credit card number. Like I really have <laughs> no idea what's happening. So, um, you know, again, I'm reasonably intelligent and I've gotten to the point where I'm just like factory reset, factory reset, factory reset. All right, it worked again. Um, and that's not okay. And so, I don't know, is that good, is that bad? I wanna share with you a picture of the sink in my hotel room. There's a story behind this. The, sexy, yeah, it's my, it's my hairy hand. I realize that that's a little disturbing for folks, but, but it was apparently installed by someone who'd never used a sink. Um, because in order to wash your hands under it, you actually have to lay your hand physically into the bowl, like on the back of the bowl, and then the nozzle of the, the faucet rests on your hand. Hey, son, did you wash your hand after going to the bathroom? No, I can't get my hand under there, right? 
Okay, I guess that's, I couldn't do it either, so let's just not wash our hands today. Okay. That's a great user interface, right? But this is the same kind of thing we tell our users every day when we provide them with things, non-deterministic patching procedures, right? How do you upgrade? Well, what we have to do is upgrade from this level to this level to this level. That's the same thing with my ubiquities. And again, I'm not poking folks in the eye on, on purpose using it as an example. My ubiquity, like I bought a ubiquity off of Amazon and it was so old that I had to take it to one patch level and then take it to a next. How did I find out? Four hours of swearing of why won't this thing connect to my network, right? It won't connect, it won't connect. Now the whole network went away except for the one thing that's still alive. Like what the hell happened? Like, I don't know. These are all terrible user interface uh, um, design decisions where we didn't inform the user, like, here's the proper way to wash your hand. In this case, you can't wash your hand sanitarily in the sink because you're rubbing your hand all over the sink in the first place. So what's the question? No, I didn't rewash my hand. Like, what are you, nuts? I couldn't get my hand under there. So, hi. It was wet. It was clean. That counts, right? That's what the kids all say. Um, shower, shower, yeah. I took a shower. I went to the bathroom. I took a shower because I couldn't wash my hands. <laughs> wow. This went places you didn't expect, didn't it? All right, um, oops, <laughs> Heidi's already apologizing. Um, there probably was a point to all this. I, I, what I want you to take away from today, um, and actually I had somebody come up and talk to me before the con. Uh, it said that they, they were um, at DEF CON years ago when I put up that slide and said don't believe anything I say. Um, and they said it was actually kind of instructor for them, right? Because they were new, they didn't understand like the lack of kind of real vetting that occurs for people to get up on stage and do the things that we do. Um, and it caused him to think with a more critical eye as he went forward, not just in his kind of cybersecurity educational process, but his career in general, right? We are surrounded by things that lie to us, phishing emails and attacks and things like that. We get paid to be skeptical and cynics. And then why would we come to this room and not be those people? Right? Why would we accept the status quo when we come here to a conference and have some random person on stage telling you uh, their thoughts and feelings? So uh, as you leave here and then come back into the same room in a few minutes, um, I would encourage you to keep that cynicism with you today, tomorrow, the next day when you go back to work. Uh, for some of you, God bless, I hope you're able to go back to work soon. Um, and uh, anyway, with that. I, just, um, I think part of the story before you end is like all wise words of wisdom. Where did you get those? words of wisdom. Which? The, the don't believe anything I say quote. This is where I look to you because I think you'll remember. You don't remember? No. Oh, it was on a magnet at a liquor store. <laughs> Happy Shmookon.